Hi guys, welcome to another video with Mal. Today I'm doing a bit of a haul video. Um, I've been to the Norwich Gaming Festival today. Um, it's right outside where I work, so it's really convenient to go to. I also went to the comic book store and went to Asda yesterday, so I just want to show you what I picked up. So first of all, from the Norwich uh, Gaming Festival, I picked up two games for Game Boy Advance. Um, I've got an old DS as well as a new one, so my old DS will play Game Boy Advance games. Uh, so this is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer game, which I don't think I played this one. I've got the other ones for Xbox, um, the original one. I've got two Buffy games for that. So I'm not sure if these are the same. I don't think they are, though, but they came out about the same year, so maybe they are. But I'm willing to have a go with it. It literally was three pounds, so that's pretty good. Um, and then the second one I got, it's actually got two games on it, so it has... Disney Princesses, and the reason I got it is it has a Lion King game on it for Game Boy Advance. I'm hoping the Lion King game on Game Boy Advance is a Lion King game from um, the old Sega Genesis, which I love. It's an awesome game. If you haven't had a chance to play it, play it. That and the Aladdin game, they both were awesome. So I picked those up. Um, I also, now I'm just going to brag about the place I work. Uh, the library had games that they were getting rid of for two pounds only. They are used games, of course, but they were getting rid of loads of them. So I picked some up for me and for my partner. So I got the second Dead Island, Dead Island Riptide. This is for my partner. He has the original Dead Island, really, really likes it. Um, so it's a zombie survival game. You're kind of trapped on the island and you have to fight against different zombies over there. So yeah. Um, so. Yeah, got that. And then I got another zombie game. We, we see a, a, um, a theme here. Dead Rising 2, which I've always wanted to play because I, I love the idea of a big pole with chainsaws attached to it, and that's how you kill zombies. I've always wanted to play this game, but I've never actually played it. Um, so another zombie game. Has a very inventive weapons, as far as I know. Um, you can see some of them on the back. He's like got like a Wolverine-like claw thing going there. So, seems cool. A wide variety of zombies in it. The other 18. Actually, all the games I got were 18. Good thing I'm over 18. Um, and then the last one I got was Mortal Kombat. I have no idea. This one's really good. Some of the Mortal Kombats are good and some of them are bad. But I don't have this one, so... Um, this is the back of it. So I picked these up, as I said, for two quid each, which I don't think you can do better than that. Um, so for three Xbox 360 games, that's pretty good. So yeah, got those from the library service. Um, and then I also got something else, and it's huge, guys. So I might have to, let's just step back. I got this for my partner, but it's kind of for both of us. Um, it's for the house, really. Um, and it's huge. And I, I also am going to be uploading a video about the Norwich Gaming um, uh, festival yeah gaming festival and you'll see me mention it in there but i got this huge i'm gonna have to step back <laughs> pokemon print of ash with the three starters this is the small version there was a bigger version I mean, the small version but i just think it's such a lovely picture um yeah, it's so wonderful. Um, I will put the card of the artist, um, their details in the description because I forgot to grab it on my wallet before I started this video, otherwise I'd show it to you now. But I'll put that in the description in case you want to go check out his other work. But yeah, I really like this. It's got one of my favorite Pokemon, uh, Charmander on it. My boyfriend's favorite Pokemon is Bulbasaur. Neither of us hate Squirtle, but neither of us like Squirtle either. And then you got this adorable Ash with, um, the Master Ball and his Pokédex. And I just think it's a lovely little scene and this is going to go above our fireplace. So it's going to get quite a place. We need to get something to hang it up with on the back though. But yeah, we're very happy with it. And my boyfriend loved it. It was a bit of a surprise. No, no real occasion really. Just I saw it and I knew he had to have it. So it's quite awesome. So that's the print of all. And last thing I got from the gaming festival was this game today. Um, I also picked up some American food as well, but I'm not going to get it out for you guys. Um, it's just called Sushi Go. Um, this is a card game. It's this pick and pass card game. 
and it says pass the sushi in this fast playing card game the goal is to grab the best combination of sushi dishes as they whiz by score points for making the most make rolls or for collecting a full set of sashimi dip your favorite nigiri in wasabi to triple its value Make sure to leave room for dessert or else you'll eat up your score. Gather the most points and consider yourself Sushi Master. So there's 108 cards in there. Um, me and my boyfriend really like board games. We have lots of friends that like board games as well. So there's the, the instruction and kind of gives you a quick guide to the game as well. Um, I'm not going to get out all the cards, but you can kind of see examples of them there. So yeah. Um, yeah, that was only a tenner, so I thought, well, why not? We'll have a go at it. I love new games, especially if they're really simple and easy to carry around like that. So that was the other thing I got. I also picked up some American food, as I said. I got myself some root beer barrels from the cotton candy store nearby and a bag of Fritos. Not chili cheese, though, which is so disappointing because chili cheese Fritos are, like, my favorite thing in the world. The thing I miss most about America. I used to have them for breakfast. It's that bad. You should have them in a Slurpee for breakfast. I really miss those days <laughs> when I was a teenager. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I picked up, I'll do my comic book haul next. So this is my comic book store. Um, and I picked up Abstract Sprocket for those of you that um, don't know and haven't been to Nort. Just cover my surname. I got Saga, the new issue. I'm actually not caught up on Saga at the moment. I keep buying them and then not reading them. But I have all the issues at this point. Um, and then Back to the Future. Well, yeah, I think I missed the first trade paperback, but everything else I have everything for Saga. Um, and then we got New Squirrel Girl, which for some reason has um, Howard the Duck on the front. <laughs> So yeah, so I'll be reading that tonight. I'm really excited about Squirrel Girl. I read Hellcat last week, and I'm just loving Squirrel Girl at the moment. I've run out of the trade paperbacks for her, so I'm just really looking forward to more Squirrel Girl. Okay, then I went to Asda yesterday um, to go pick up a new bike mirror, because I always buy my bike mirrors at Asda, and they're really good quality ones, so if you need a mirror for your bike, it's a place to go. Five pounds, good mirror. I always buy a couple, because eventually your bike falls on them and they break off. <laughs> That's what happens to me every time. I think I've got my third one now. Um, but I picked up some stuff from Asda as well. So the first thing I got is this anti-stress dot-to-dot, -dot, which I've never seen a dot-to-dot -dot anti-stress book before. It's always colored. And I actually quite like dot-to-dot. -dot. So you can see some examples. There are lots of dots <laughs> of some of the uh, pictures in there. I think that one could be a squirrel. <laughs> that would be awesome if it was. So yeah, so you can see some of the examples. And like the dots are going up to like 300 and something. So there's quite a lot of stuff in there. Um, but it's something different, I think. Um, and I've never seen a dot to dot one before. Um, cat picture drew me in, of course, because like cats, awesome. Had to. Um, so yeah, so that's the first thing I got. And then I thought, as I'm going to buy the movie, and I have a huge collection of Goosebump books, I had to buy the novelization of the movie, which is awesome. Um, so what if monsters were real and your, um, your imagination were real? Oh, what if the monsters inside your imagination were real? Let's actually read in English, Melissa. Um, so we got the summary of the movie. Zach has just moved from New York City to Maryland, and he's ready to accept his fate. New kid in the boring small town. Then he meets Hannah, the girl next door that every guy dreams of. Unfortunately, Hannah's dad, Mr. Shivers. I still think that's a reference to the guy that used to write the the um, Michigan scary story, because I, I swear his name was Shivers. I've got to find my, my Michigan books about horror. Um, it's a total nightmare. So when Zach hears Hannah screaming, he rushes over to rescue her. And that's when it happens. Zack opens one of Shiver's unlocked books and unleashes a monster. Oh no. Turns out Shiver's is really R.L. Stein. Seriously? Of course he was. The famous horror writer. Would we call him the famous horror writer or the famous children's writer? I think he'd be the famous children's writer. And his monsters are real, including Slappy, the dummy who likes to pull people's strings. Now Zack, Hannah, and Stein must team up to get the monsters back where they belong. But first, I'll have to stop Slappy. So that's the back of it. Now, I already noticed by like looking through this, 
but whenever like slappies in the story the pages actually go black which i think is awesome so when they focus on him they actually change the pages and there's like little illustrations it is a book for children of course and there's the lawn gnome um oh I missed it there's the uh, haunted car now the other thing in here that i found hilarious first of all it's not by all stein of course not but if you look in here it's edited and introduced by R.L. Stein. So I, I gotta read you R.L. Stein's introduction, guys. Because look at this page. That looks cool. So introduction by R.L. Stein. I had a nightmare last night. I dreamed I was writing the introduction to this book. <laughs> Behind me, someone murmured the strange words that bring Slappy the evil dummy to life. I'm not even gonna attempt those, guys, because I don't want to bring Slappy the evil dummy to life. I, I can't risk it. I honestly can't. Johnny Taz, you better not put, do say these words in front of your slappy. Well, Morgan's going to freak out. So, um, I heard those frightening words in my dream, and I woke up shivering. I spun around, expecting the dummy with his cruel grin and cold stare to be standing there, ready to terrorize me, but no sign of him. Luckily, nightmares like that don't come true. The next morning, I had some good news. I hurried to tell my wife, Jane, Jack Black's going to play me in the Goosebump movie. I said, Jack Black is hilarious. Jane nodded. <laughs> He's wonderful. He's terrific. He'll be a great me. I exclaimed, thumping the be breakfast table with my fist. The dog was up from her first nap of the day, wondering what the fuss was about. I sure, I wonder how he'll play me, I said, my mind spinning. Sophisticated, maybe? Darkly mysterious? Or an evil genius? Probably as a lunatic, Jane said. Or is that too real? A few weeks later, Jack flew into New York City where I live and we had lunch. I had no idea Arl Stein lived in New York City, but it makes sense because when he ever has meet and greets, he's always in New York City. We had a good conversation, a lot of laughs. I know how I'm going to play you, Jack told me over, the, over dessert. I'm going to play you as you, only a lot more sinister. That's confusing because he has a really ridiculous accent in the movie. Where did that accent come from, Jack Black? That's not Arl Stein's accent. That sounded right to me. In person, I'm not very sinister. An Ohio newspaper once wrote, In person, R.L. Stein is about as scary as an optician. <laughs> I'm basically a jolly guy who likes to sit at a keyboard all day and write things to frighten children. Yay! I like to do that as well. <laughs> I'm delighted that Jack Black would star in the Goosebump movie. And just as delighted when the three teenagers in the story were cast. I'm not reading their names out. They were 17, extremely talented, nice. I just had a lot of fun talking to them on the set of Atlanta where the movie was filmed. So it was filmed in Atlanta like The Walking Dead. Weird. Since the movie was announced, everybody asked me this question. Which book is the movie about? This was a difficult decision. And a question had to be answered before the movie could be written. Which story would the movie tell? Which evil character would star in the film? Should it be one of the slappy, the dummy books? The Haunted Mask. Welcome to Horrorland. <laughs> Should have been. Should have been Horrorland. One of the Monster Blood Tales. Dr. Maniac. Murder the Clown. No. <laughs> Those nasty lawn gnomes. Yes. <laughs> I've written more than 125 Goosebump books, so choosing one of them for the film was a hard decision, to say the least. Then the script writing team had a brilliant idea. Why should we base the movie on one book? Let's try and squeeze as many of the Goosebump characters in the story as we can. And that's just what happened. Yep. <laughs> the writers set out a major challenge themselves. Use dozens of monsters and villains and crazy creatures from the Goosebump book. You still didn't use the horrors from Horrorland, though. Why not, Earl? Why? They're best monsters. <sighs> Create a story in which Arl Stein and the teenagers have to battle just about every bad news character ever to appear. All, yes, all in one movie. The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena, a gigantic praying mantis from A Shocker on Stock Street, plus Slappy, this moan cackolinkus, weird word, zombie staggering scarecrows, werewolf of fever swap, and those nasty lawn gnomes everywhere you look. How will these creatures ever be defeated and sent back to where they came from? Well, that's what the film's all about. <laughs> the book tells the whole story. And it has scares and all the laughs and all the surprises and startling twists that you'll see in the movie. And you'll also find 
Hey, wait! What are you doing there, Slappy? Get away! Get out of here! Nightmares don't come true. Slappy, please! So we have it cut off there. And then Slappy takes over. <laughs> I gotta read this, guys. I have to. And then we'll be done with this book, I promise. But it's just too hilarious. Thanks for the warm welcome, RL. I'm happy to see you, too. You know what RL stands for, don't you? Real loser. Ha ha ha. You're good looking, RL. Is that your nose or are you eating a toadstool? I like what you did with your hair. I noticed I said hair, not hairs. Ha ha ha. You know I've seen better skin on an onion. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Actually, I'm kidding. I think you're pretty. Pretty ugly. Ha ha ha. This is such 90s humor. Does your face hurt? It's killing me. Ha ha ha. But enough polite conversation. I just came to tell everybody who the real star of the movie is. Let me give you a hint. It's not spelled RL. Ha ha ha. Enjoy the book, everyone. I'm sure you'll find out who the real dummy is. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that was ridiculous, guys. That was ridiculous. So, yeah. Movie adaption of Goosebumps. Very happy with this. I probably will actually just read it cover to cover. I just feel like I should have it if I have the whole collection. That I should have this as well. And I quite like the actual movie poster cover. I, I quite like it. So the last things I get um, are ponies. And I will unbox them for you. So the first one I get, I'll actually save the best for last. First one I got here, and this is this is funny because they made an error on the packaging, is Apple Bloom and Babseed. But as you know, as you can see here, they've called her Sweetie Babs. They've combined two characters from My Little Pony because they don't know the difference. So this is Babseed, not Sweetie Babs. And Apple Bloom, of course, which is Applejack's sister. So I'll just open this up. And this is as exclusive, apparently. They had a whole bunch of like Apple Bloom's family and friends type things. But actually, my Asda hasn't ever had them, so I was a bit surprised to see them because I have never seen them in before. I know, I know they existed, but never seen them before. Now I'm not sure about them having holes in their heads for the little plates. <laughs> I wish they didn't, because I don't actually have a bab seed um, pony yet, so I quite like that. Her tail actually feels different than the other ponies. Yeah, unfortunately, she's got a little hole in her head because I don't know why they have to spin plates. Comes with a little picnic table as well. And we've got Apple Bloom, which I do have an Apple Bloom. Uh, actually, right here. I have an Apple Bloom right here. Oh, they're different sizes. And their eyes are different, see? And this one's skin's a bit better than that one. This one came in a pack of ponies as well. They're completely different colors. This one's much better quality than this new Asda one. Not good quality as the tail feels really like a different type of plastic as well. Um, got my little pony print on her hoof. Um, and then we've got the stupid plate sticking off her head because I guess they were spinning plates. So yeah, so you got Apple Bloom and Babseed. And a little table just for the fun of it really. Don't know why. So those were those ones. And then the other one I got is like my favorite pony now. <laughs> It's just, it's so good. Is Pinkie Pie. But look at all the stuff she comes with. This is Pinkie Pie. Um, no haters thing. It's, um, haters gonna hate. <laughs> um, it's how I first saw Pinkie Pie as well. I can remember seeing this image of Pinkie Pie and going, I think I'll like her. Um, so yeah, so Pinkie Pie looking awesome. I have like a million Pinkie Pies. Because like, she's my favorite pony. I actually, I can grab one got dust all over there. There's a Pinkie Pie. Um, when I first started collecting ponies, I got like a Pinkie Pie necklace so I couldn't actually get her in the packs at the time. And then she just kept coming in those like collectible patch things. And then I got her in a blind box as well. So I think I have four Pinkie Pies now. Um, including this one. So. so we got some balloons. And that looks like it's going to hook onto her tail. We've got this little hat, which is adorable. This is so cute. I like this so much. We've got sunglasses. Which are actually nicer than some of the glasses they give to ponies. Just grab them. Um, this is Silver Spoon's glasses. And they don't actually fit on her face at all. So it's a bit ridiculous. And then of course, she's kind of out herself. Ooh. 
her shoe fell off. So the shoes, <laughs> I hit my camera, whoops. Um, she comes with these little shoes as well that do come off her feet. And the present box comes off, it looks like, as well. I don't know how. That looks like, oh, it's like moldable. That's fine. So you can take the whole thing off as well if you don't want it on her. So if you just wanted her standing like this, you could have her on her own with nothing on her. But I'm going to put the present box back on her because this is the reason I put her. If I can get it back on her now, maybe I shouldn't have taken it off. That was stupid, Melissa. No, let's go back on. Okay. So I'm going to put her little shoes back on her. And um, we're going to make her up so she's awesome. So she's got all that on. Um, the balloons go on her tail. There's a little hole there. So yeah, so there's balloons. Um, I guess the sunglasses go on her eyes, although she won't be able to see, and these don't really fit on her very well. They fit on her not at all, actually. And then we got the hat. <laughs> this might be too much stuff. Okay, <laughs> she's got, like, too much stuff on her now. I really like the hat, but actually it might be a little too much. <laughs> I take the balloons off, actually. The balloons don't really help it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. She just looks pretty awesome. I like how she's like stepping as well. I like the hat best. The hat is the best bit. Definitely. Definitely the hat. Yeah, so she's become probably my favorite Pinkie Pie I've seen. Um, I nearly bought the My Little Pony magazine this month, and I have bought it in the past. And they had Trixie. They had a Trixie, um, little figure but I have Trixie already and I've got a better Trixie because I've got one that actually has a jewel for a cutie mark and the one in the magazine didn't and then I couldn't find any where the paint work was very well um so I decided not to buy them at all so yeah so those are little figures I picked up from Asda as well and this video is going to be really long now but that is my haul for the week guys so I got a little bit of video games a little bit of My Little Pony an uh, awesome print, a uh, goosebump book, um, pretty much most of my interests at this point, except I didn't come away with the Funko Pop, but actually I'm going to be sent one in the next few days. Um, and I won um, one of the other giveaways that was going on, um, and I will be using the money towards some pops, so I'm excited because I'm going to buy myself some pops that I haven't decided what I want yet. So if you got any suggestions of things I might like, go for it. Most of my pops are Disney or Back to the Future, or um, like TV and movie related, I would think. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to me, I'm now trying to get to 100 subscribers. I'm really close now. I just finished a 50 subscriber giveaway, but we'll be doing a 100 subscriber giveaway when we get to 100, and then we'll have to wait for a while for another giveaway. But I said I'd do 100 ones, so I will do one. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hi guys, Fangirling with Mel here. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please subscribe and like down below. You can also comment on my videos and I'll get back to you. Um, if you'd like to support me in my other social media endeavors, you can click on my Patreon and support my video making and writing. Um, I've also got a Twitter and a Facebook below if you'd like to follow me on other social medias. Um, the other thing you can do is buy my book which is called Becoming Death. There's a little advert coming up after this bit of the video. Um, it's on Amazon. It's about Grim Reapers. Becoming Death by Melissa Brown. It's awesome. You'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.